This is a short video on how to recode variables. So when we're making cross tabs, really you don't want more than four or five um, attributes for each variable. Um, and when we're using very small data sets, often we only want two or three. So sometimes when we have a variable that has lots and lots of attributes in it, or lots and lots of possible responses, we need to recode them in kind of the most common responses. This is particularly true for interval ratio variables such as, uh, for example, this, this variable that we looked at in workshop a couple of weeks ago on how many books people read. Right? So during the past 12 months, about how many books did you read? So if I actually ran this in um, SPSS as a crosstab, it would make an absolutely huge crosstab. And that's not what I want. So what I want to do is I want to condense this question about books into a more reasonable um, couple of categories. And I really need to use what I know about the social world to, um, and what I know about this variable to make that happen. So my first step is usually looking at a frequency distribution for that variable. Right? I don't want to just um, pick, it doesn't matter if the categories are even, it needs to be something that kind of fits with the distribution of what is actually going on in my data. Right? So we see here that there's a lot of people who wrote, read no books. And I might have reasons to believe that they are different than people who read even one or two books a year, right? So we see that there are a lot of people who answered none, and then there's a number of people who answered one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then the things get a little bit more unpredictable, right? There are some people who answer 10 and 12 and 15. There's a number of people who answer 20 or more. And then very few people, oh, some people said 97 or more, right? That's a whole category. There was 108 um, people in that category. Those are people who read a lot of books. Um, so what I might want to do is I might want to think about um, kind of some meaningful divisions here. If I only need to make a couple of groups, I probably want one of those to be a group of people who read none. They read no books last year. And then I might think it's important to put people who read, um, say, um, six or fewer books. There seems to be a natural break there. There's a whole bunch of people who read two to six books or one to six books last year. And then things get a little bit more unpredictable, right? But I might make a category of seven to 20 books. That seems so arbitrary. But I know there's going to be a number of people in that category, right? And it's a category of people who read about... Um, one or one and a half books a month. And then um, if I want to create just one or two more categories, um, I might want to make 21 to 50 books and then 51 plus books a year. So this gives me actually five different categories of people, people who read lots and lots of books a year, right? People who read a good amount of books a year, people who read books about once a month, people who read just a few books a year, and people who read who know, no books a year. So the thing is I need to tell SPSS what kinds of plans I have for this variable. So we're actually going to go into a different function. We're going to go into transform. And we always, always, always recode into different variables. If I recode into the same variable, what I'm doing is I am permanently changing the variable that I have here. It's irreversible. That's not what I want. So I'm going to recode into different variables. So I need to tell SPSF, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, um, which variable I plan on changing. That's my input variable. And I need to give it a new name. So I'm going to say um, books read. Right? And I can say number of books read this year. I'm going to say recoded. What I encourage you to do when you're doing this kind of thing is to, and it's really important you hit the change button, but you also should write it down on a scrap piece of paper as you're recoding. Because you're going to need to go back into the variable view and explain to SPSS what you just did. So I need to explain to SPSS what I'm changing about this variable. So I'm going to open up this button called old and new values. And I'm going to tell SPSS that I want to keep um, people who said they wrote, read no books, I want to keep that at zero. Right? So that's actually going to just stay the same. I actually didn't have to do that. Um, I could have just 
left it and it'd be fine. Um, and then I want to tell SPSS that I want to recode anyone who read between one and six books. I'm going to recode this as a two. And I've, or sorry, as a one. And I've written this down on a scrap piece of paper so I can remember. Yes, one through six. That means one now. And I'm going to keep doing this for all of them. I'm like seven through 20, right? I'm going to give them a two. And 21 through 50. This is a three. And then I have these really great buttons here, which says that basically like whatever this value is, if I put 51, it will take 51 through the very, very highest value in that variable. It'll include all of those in one group. And so I'm going to make that a four. Oh, nope, I did that wrong. Let me do that again. And if you only want to change one thing about this variable, you can just change that one thing and then say all other values copy old values, right? So you can kind of keep those things the same. So I'm going to do that. I'm basically telling SPSS what I want it to do. And it'll go through and it'll, it'll do that. And what it'll do, um, it'll give you a little summary here of how you recoded it. For your homework, you should keep that on there so I know what you did. And what it'll do is it'll put it at the very bottom of all of your variables here. Here's, here's books recoded. And what I need to do as my final step is go in to my values and say you know, 0 is none. 1 is 1 to 6 books. 2 is 7 to 20 books. 3 means 21 to 50 books. 4 means 51 plus books. And now I have this new variable. To double check that everything that came out okay, I'm usually going to go in and do it like a new frequency distribution. Uh, so again, my new variable is at the very, very bottom here. And so I'm going to go and I'm going to see, like, how did this really turn out? Does it, does it make sense how it turned out? So actually, this, this worked out very well. There's a number of people in each of these categories. Right? Um, and I can talk about how, like, well, 19% of the people who answered this question didn't read anything last year, and 34% were, or actually 41% were um, read one to six books. They didn't read a whole lot. But 6.4% of the people who answered this question read a lot of books, right? They were like really heavy readers. And so I could, I could take this and I could put it into a cross tabs and could look at it and look at whether more frequent readers were more or less likely to use the internet, were more or less likely to read the newspaper as well, and that's, that's kind of useful. We can do the same process for interval, um, for ordinal variables, where we can condense them down. It's almost a little bit easier because they don't have such this large range. And I'm going to show you how to do that on another video.